Welcome everyone to Love My Sheep. In case you missed the introduction episode to season seven, this season has been dedicated dedicated to honoring the legacy of my dad, Jacob Thomas, and therefore will feature his sermons. In this particular episode is a sermon he preached on September 14th, 2008, titled Praying in the Spirit. And I think it's a great lead in to this season especially since the last series on the YouTube channel was titled Conversations with God in Grief, a focus on prayer. So I now leave the rest of this time and space to that sermon. And this morning, uh, I'd like to share something the Lord has been dealing with me, rather in my heart. A subject, praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and Supplication for all the saints. Verse 19. And for me, that is the Apostle Paul, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now those who were with me in Sunday school, and some have been with me for 12 years, and uh, last four years we have been learning uh, from the epistle to the Ephesians. And the last class, last Sunday of July, uh, we looked at the armor of God, the last piece. There are six pieces of armor God has given to a Christian soldier. And then I thought, you know, this, is, this has been my experience. I go through a book and never ends. That's my life. It start and never ends. So today I'm going to finish with the last verse. That's another reason why I have chosen this. Praying in the Spirit. You know, Paul, writing this letter from the jail... He didn't have any word processor, even a fountain pen. You know, you can imagine him sitting on this iron stool and writing, and dipping the feather or whatever in the ink and writing to them. And as he is writing, he sees this Roman soldier, you know, the guard. He looks at him and looks at all these armor the Roman soldier has. Then he says, a Christian soldier must be like this. Because Christian life is always a conflict. We are in a battlefield. And the Apostle Paul knew it very well. It's always struggle, trials, pain, suffering, sickness, and it, the list goes on. So, but in the midst of all that, you know, Paul being in chain, right to them, in verse 10 of this chapter, be strong in the Lord and put on the armor of God. And he starts with the belt, which is the truth, and he goes to the righteousness, your breastplate, and then your shoes, the preparation for the gospel. And then he goes on to other three, you know, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation, which is your hope, and the sword of the spirit. And he says, put on all this and stand. And that's what we learned last Sunday school of my class. Stand. But it doesn't end there. And then he goes on to say, praying always with all 
prayer and petition. A Christian has to show, first of all, himself and the people around him that he is helpless without the help from the Lord. The Lord has given all this armor. He is safe. There is a popular teaching out there, come to Jesus and all your problems are solved. That's not Paul's teaching. That's not the Bible's teaching. Bible teaching is what? Come to Jesus. And then the battle begins. He is known as the captain of our salvation. In the Old Testament he is known as the Lord of hosts. Who stand with thrown out sword in his hand. Right from the Old Testament to the end of the New Testament. That's what it is. Christian life is struggle, battle. But the beautiful thing about it is. You are never left alone. You are not abandoned. You are never told. Now you are on your own. Go and fight. But this instruction from the heavens comes to us. Pray always. And Paul in another letter to him, Philippians says, Pray without a ceasing. And the Thessalonians he says, Pray without ceasing. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, Luke 18 and 1, Pray always, lest you faint. In the NIV it says, Until, Unless you lose heart. You can lose your heart. You can faint. If you don't want to faint, what do you do? Pray. Always. The character of a Christian is determined by the very fact how much time he takes to pray. Pray always unless you faint. Why? You know, the Lord gave all this armor, you know, the sword and the shield and the helmet and everything. But these things were given to you. And you don't know how to use the sword. Like all of us do. I did many times. I thought I know how to use I knew how to use the sword and I made mistake. I cut where I shouldn't. This armor, each piece is given by the Lord and only the manufacturer knows how it can be safely operated. Therefore, we had to ask the Lord every moment, Lord, how can I? You gave me this. I mean, you pray, you know, if you ever happen to be in the boot camp or any military training, you know, the soldiers have to polish their brass, the button and the shoes and everything has to be shining. The buckle, everything has to be bright and shining. And you can do your armor the Lord has given has to be polished every morning. Make sure it is in usable condition. It is workable. And you can do it only by praying. Praying. You know, that verse is so interesting. If you have your Bible, I read from New King James. It says, Praying always with all prayer. It's very hard. 
for the pastors and the Christian teachers to make the people realize what prayer is. To most of us, prayer is we come with a long shopping list, my wants and my needs and my dreams and aspirations and come and spell it out before the Lord. There is a place for that. It's called a supplication. Paul knows that we, are, we live in a world where there is so much need. And in NIV it says petition. Supplication, the word, the new English, petition. We have to bring petition. We have to. We have to pray for our daily bread and so many other things. But before you bring your petition before the Lord, you have to pray. What is prayer? Prayer is communion with the Lord. Fellowship with the Lord. You know, those fathers and the mothers know what it is. If you have a child and the child just come and sit on your lap and not asking for a quarter or anything, just to be with you, the greatest moment in the life of a father or mother. Child, child. Nothing. Sometimes don't even talk. That's what prayer is. Coming to the presence of your heavenly father. And sit at his feet. And look at the beautiful face of your God and Savior and say, Lord, it's better for me to sit with you. That's prayer. When you do that, the heart of your heavenly Father is pleased. And then he will stoop down and ask you, my son, my daughter, what do you want? <laughs> Praise the Lord. First, prayer. All prayer, there is all kinds of prayer. There is audible prayer, there is inaudible prayer, there is prayer in the public, there is prayer in the private, there is prayer on Friday night, there is prayer on Tuesday morning, there is prayer at home, there is prayer when you drive your car, there is prayer when you cook, when you jog, there is prayer, praying always. Knowing the fact that I am in Christ. That's what the prayer life of a Christian is. Shut in with the Lord. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, he knew that he was in struggle. You read the Gospels, you will find every now and then we read the beautiful word in the old King James. He withdrew himself. He had good friends. He had family. He had crowd who appreciated him. But in spite of all that, he took time to be alone with the Father. You and I need the time. Sometimes we don't say anything at all. The best relationship with two people is that. Not talking, chatting all the time. Because one has to be the listener when you do that. But in this case, just keep quiet. Just enjoy the presence of each other. You got to remember that. When you come to the Lord, He enjoys your presence. Oh, the beauty of Christian life is that. This God of heaven look at you and say, this is my beautiful child. You know why he says that? One day, 
this weak person who is skin and bones one day this believer is going to be transformed and he is going to be like his only begotten son the lord jesus christ when he looks at you he doesn't see what you are he see what you are going to be the holy spirit is working in you to make you like jesus christ and that's what happened when you pray always all kinds of prayer and then it says a supplications bring our needs before him philippians 4 and 6 the old translation i like be careful for nothing and the new king james says be anxious for nothing yeah come to him with praise and thanksgiving then make your petition known to him let it be made known to him let him know that he needs you he knows already but you know the greatest mystery for me in christian life there are many mysteries one of the mysteries is that this god can do everything is an almighty god he has the power to do anything and everything he wants but he doesn't do anything before his child ask him the lord cannot do anything that's the way he he made he made us co-workers with him he he wants us to be a part of every work he does and therefore he wants us to pray make your petitions made known unto him and then he says being watchful to the end for to the end then he says with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints that's what if you read in your bulletin you will find friday night is what intercessory prayer praying for all the saints you know there is a small book one chapter just before revelation called jude the epistle of jude and if you read the third verse of that you find a very interesting word common salvation we are called for to be a part of the common salvation that's why i come to church on sunday morning because my salvation is common it's not very personal oh i am christian and i will try to do a good good job live a holy quiet life and then i will go to heaven no that's not the way the lord has designed the christian life we are a part of the whole body of christ which is the church and that's why we pray for all saints it's a common salvation 
It's a personal decision to be a part of it. It's a personal decision that you confess your sin and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. But when you are saved, he makes you a member of his body. And you belong to the church. If the church is not the way it is expected to be, you are a part of it. It's like our nation is at war at this moment, Afghanistan war. Whether you like it or not, as a Canadian, you are at war. Because you are a citizen of this nation. That's the way it is. Once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a part of the body. It's a common salvation. Therefore, you are supposed to pray for all the saints. And then Paul goes on, you know, he gives one word, verse 19, and for me, <laughs> this great man, you know, who has so much of revelation, who was taken up to be in the third heaven, who has seen Jesus Christ with his own natural eye, the man who wrote most of the New Testament letters, And look at him. He says, pray for me. Why he wants your prayer? He's in jail. If I were writing this letter from the jail, I would surely say, Oh, efficient Christians, my brothers and sisters, I'm in this jail. It is awful. Pray earnestly that I get out of this place as soon as possible. No way. Paul, is, Paul doesn't want your prayer for that. And Paul was a sick person, you know. Some say he had some eye disease, some say he was a hunchback, and so many other things. Whatever it is, he was sick, we know that much. Weak in his flesh. And he could have said, okay, call the efficient church to fasting and prayer for me that I be healed. Oh, this is too much for me to bear. No. None of those things. He says, pray for me. For what? It's in your Bible. That when I open my mouth, I like it in a, in King James, no old and new, that utterance may be given to me. And I will say that words may be given to me when I open my mouth. Oh, that is, that is challenging to me, and I hope that is challenging to you as well. Even if you forget everything I said before, I hope and pray you will remember it. Pray for your pastor. It's nice and needful to pray for his health and long life and strength and wisdom and all those things. What the Holy Spirit wants us to pray for our pastor or any pastor. Now, we are directly concerned about our pastor. Any worker of the gospel, any teacher of the Sunday school, boys and girls club, anyone who teaches or preaches or takes leadership, pray for each one. For what? When they open their mouth, the Lord may give them word.
our need or the need of the hour is to listen to the word. We need to hear the word. I hear so many complaints here and there. Oh, why the church is like this? Why the world is like this? You know why? Because you and I don't pray. We pray the word may be given to the preachers of the gospel. That they may preach the word. It is right there in your book. How they should preach. Boldly. And if you have the new, new international you read. Fearless. When the preachers open their mouth, they may speak the word like the prophets of old did. Thus saith the Lord. Preach the word without fear. Not Figuring it out whether it is acceptable to the world or not. You know, we live in a politically correct world. A communical world. Everything goes right. Nothing is wrong. But let... Now, when I say that, it's not only preachers. Everyone. You know it or not, when you are a Christian, you are a preacher. You are a witness. And pray when you open your mouth, you speak without fear. Not weighing your words and measuring your thought without fear because the word is given to you by the Lord. And the Lord can give it. Only we who sit in the pew can pray. Stop criticizing. Stop evaluating. Stop reading the papers and this and that. Get on our knees and what? Pray in the spirit. Not with your mind. Not in beautiful language. Not theologically correct sentences. Pray in the spirit. Not in your spirit. That become emotion. Pray in the spirit. In the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know to know more about it. I don't have time. No, you have to read Romans chapter 8. Everybody knows Romans 8 and 28. Everything works together for good to those who love him. Those who are called according to his purpose. Everything works together. We love it. We, we memorize it. We, we repeat it. But there is some... There are two, you know, at 28, there are 27 verses before that. And especially 26 and 27 before I close. The Holy Spirit himself pray for us. Groaning. And I hope you will read that eight. Romans 8, 26 and 27. We don't know what to pray for, how we ought to pray. Then the Holy Spirit prays. And what I like, you know, it wasn't, you know, 
Last week, someday, when I looked at verse 27, it made me rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Verse 27 says, He, unfortunately in old King James, that he, that H is in lowercase letters. But in New King James, it's the He, capital H, means the Lord. The Lord searched just the heart and you know when the Lord searches the heart what does he find that's what makes me rejoice when the Lord searches my heart he doesn't see the heart of Jacob that is wicked and evil full of evil imagination conniving thoughts and schemes and plans that's not pleasing to God I thank God when God searches my heart, he doesn't see my plans. You know what he sees? Read 27. He sees the mind of the Holy Spirit when he searches the heart of his people. When he searches the heart of a Christian, what he sees is the Holy Spirit in his life. Working in you. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You are preserved for the glory of the Holy Spirit. For the glory of God. Until that day. You are sealed. And the Holy Spirit is in your heart. And that's what the Lord sees in you. That's why everything works together for good to you. Sometimes you wonder. How come everything worked for me? I didn't even pray. I want you to know even when you didn't pray the Holy Spirit prays for you that doesn't take you out of your responsibility that makes you more responsible I want you to know that when you know that the Holy Spirit is in you that makes you more fearful that makes you tremble before the Lord And that's the reason why we as Pentecostal, sometimes when we pray in the Spirit, what happens to us? We don't know what happens to us. We can't speak in English anymore. Not in any earthly language anymore. And the Spirit gives us utterance and we speak in tongue that nobody can understand. That happens. That's the Holy Spirit praying for you. You know, that is the assurance of our salvation. When we walk out of this worship place, we got to be people who are rejoicing. Not because we have everything. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Are praying for us. And what else? We have a high priest. The greatest high priest. A great high priest. Ministering for us. Interceding for us. And Old English says an advocate pleads for you. Up in heaven, the second person of the Holy Trinity is defending you. It's my son, yeah. I know Satan accuses him for that he did. But I have bought him with my own precious blood. He is washed clean and pure, whiter than snow, by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what your Savior tells the Father. Up in heaven, we have an advocate. And down here in this world, we have a paraclete. 
one who walks with us, one who counsels us. Therefore, we can go on marching, claiming this common salvation, singing the songs of Zion. But the message this morning is praying in the Spirit. I know if you are like me, you go on your knees to pray, you lose your thought, you don't know how to, you feel, oh, my prayer is not going beyond the ceiling of this room, I'm sleepy, drowsy, I don't know. That's when you try to pray on your own. <sighs> Realize. The Holy Spirit is praying for you. Leave everything behind. My thoughts, my plans, what I want, what I like. Leave everything behind and let the Holy Spirit take charge of your tongue. And you will see you have freedom. Another thing I want to tell you is, when you do that, you will be amazed the way you pray. And then, get up from your knees or whatever posture you are in, and think about the words you prayed. I know many of you can relate to that when you pray. You didn't know it. That was not on my mind. Sometimes you pray for the people you never thought it was on your, on your mind. My main point is not that. My main point is think what you prayed. Most of the time you will find that was the message you needed from the Lord. Praying always in the Spirit is a two-way conversation. It is not talking and talking. It is talking and listening and talking and listening. Your Father talks to you. So let us as a church be people who pray in the Spirit. And may the Lord bless us. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, know that I love you and the Lord loves you the most.